Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in the C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about abstract classes or interfaces in C++. And the way that we implement these is by having purely virtual functions in that abstract or interface class in C++. So if you're coming from a language like C Sharp or Java, you might be familiar with this idea of an interface. In C++, we don't have that built in as a keyword in any way. Instead, we implement these using purely virtual functions. So let me go ahead and demonstrate with an example how to do this so you can understand. All right, so what I'm going to do here is first give us a driving example. And you might have seen this if you've played games, for instance, where you can do things like choose how you're drawing the graphics or with what API. Maybe you're using Vulkan, DirectX, OpenGL, or whatever. If you haven't heard those terms, don't worry about it. Let me illustrate. And the idea would be that you have some common way to render or draw your graphics. So I'm just going to call this I renderer. And the I here stands for your interface. And again, you'll see this interchangeably used with other terms such as abstract class. And sometimes that's a keyword in different languages. But the idea is we're going to have a common functionality in this I renderer class that every derived class must implement. So if I'm going to be driving a new class here for, say, OpenGL, or maybe some other way to draw things, such as using uh, Vulkan, or however many other classes that I have here that I'm going to be implementing, we'll all have a common interface. And that way, when we use things like inheritance-based polymorphism, that is where I just create something that is a I renderer, I can swap these out and have the functionality or the driver be OpenGL or Vulkan or whatever the technology or the algorithms that I want to choose. So let's go ahead and look at an example for this. So again, I'm going to start off this example by creating a new class here called iRender. And that's going to serve as my interface. Again, the i is just by convention. So let's go ahead and create some functions here. I'm going to create something like draw and maybe something like update for now. And that'll be enough here. Okay, so that's our interface class. So again, it works. It works fine. Um, nothing that we have to do here. But again, the goal would be to use this as a sort of template for things that inherit from iRenderer so that they have draw and update functions. So let's go ahead and create this OpenGL class and it will publicly inherit from iRenderer. And we'll give it you know, some public functions maybe later and we'll go ahead and do the same thing with Vulkan. So again, let's go ahead and just see how this works here. So if I create some iRenderer, and I'll just call it my render equals new. And I'll decide to use OpenGL at runtime. And I can do my render uh, draw my render uh, update. Okay. And I probably want to do them in this order <laughs> if I'm being consistent. So let's go ahead and compile this. And it runs and works fine. And then again, the advantage of having these. Uh, to derive classes, OpenGL and Vulkan, be from a common interface is I could, of course, swap these out. And I could say, well, now I actually want to use Vulkan. So again, maybe the user makes that choice at runtime or when you start the program up or whatever. And they can rerun it and it works fine. Okay. Now, as we learned last time, though, there are some things that we might want to do. So for example, we might want to override the functionality of draw and update here. So what I could do is implement my own function here. Um, actually, I'll just write it as void draw. And I'm overriding the functionality of the class that I have here. So I'm just going to print this out and say OpenGL uh, draw here. OK, just so we can see what's going on. Here. And I'll do the same thing for Vulkan. OK, and let's just make this consistent. So I have the draw here. All right, and let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see everything on the screen. We'll recompile. And well, we've got a problem here, and this is what we learned last time and why I encourage the override. If I'm trying to override a function in my drive class, these functions have to be virtual, okay? So that's a good thing. Uh, we're describing what we're overriding here. And I'll make this virtual here. And I'm gonna make this one virtual as well. Now, 
what I want to do here is uh, first fix this little tiny uh, syntax error here with these parentheses. <laughs> so we can't have the uh, return time specified like that. There we are. And go ahead and give this a run here. So now we can see again that the appropriate function here for Vulkan is being called for my render. And again, just to swap this out one more time with open uh, GL, just to show that this uh, works here, it's working code, it, this is called here. So again, that was the whole idea. Now, what's a little bit strange about this is that I could still instantiate things that are I renderers here. So for example, I could still print out, you know, I render here. And why is this strange? Well, if you've done any amount of graphics programming or have an idea of what OpenGL or Vulkan this is, are, these are actual APIs that do something. They actually drive graphics. Again, if you haven't done graphics programming, it doesn't matter because I just want iRenderer to serve as an interface. I don't want it to actually do something. So meaning um, I don't want to be able to, and what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is just create an iRenderer, okay? Because in the context of this program, when I run it and it just prints out, you know, iRenderer draw or whatever, it's not meaningful. I just want this to serve again as a interface or a sort of template for what must be implemented in OpenGL. So what I'm actually going to do is get rid of this code here. And instead of actually providing an implementation, I'm just gonna say equals zero. And this is a purely or a pure virtual function. Okay, draw is when I do the equal zero here. And what this states is that I must implement draw in any of the drive classes from this base class here, or this interface I render. Okay, so now if I go ahead and compile this, um, we're gonna see that, well, because this actual I renderer here has a purely virtual function here with no definition, I actually can't instantiate these types here of iRenderer here. So it's because the following virtual functions are pure within iRenderer. So I would either have to provide a implementation here so this actual instance of this object knows how to call it draw, or I have to uh, limit myself to just instantiating objects of type OpenGL or Vulkan, which are a type of render, which is fine. And that's the constraint that we're trying to provide in this example. So let me go to that head down here, fix this code here, and show a, uh, let's just go ahead and do OpenGL because this has implemented draw here. Okay, so I'll go ahead and compile this here. Now, what about this update here? So we've already figured out by just having one purely virtual function here that we can't instantiate iRenders, because again, we need to find some sort of uh, implementation here. So what happens then if I make update also purely virtual. Well, go ahead and take a moment to guess and I'll go ahead and compile. And we're gonna get errors for both OpenGL and Vulkan here. And both these errors are going to say, um, well, this first error is just a missing semicolon error. So let me clean that up here. But both of them are just gonna say, you know, invalid new expression of abstract class type OpenGL. Which again is a little bit strange, but since OpenGL is inheriting from iRenderer, and iRenderer is this interface or abstract class, we don't have an implementation of update. So we need to actually implement this function here. And it's giving us the error just for OpenGL because that's the only type that we have um, instantiated here or attempted to. We happen to use Vulkan here. Okay, so let me actually now implement uh, the update function following the exact function signature here for our member function. And again, we are overriding the behavior. And again, I like to type override because then it sort of looks up to the base class that we're driving from to make sure that this in fact is a function that exists. Um, and if I do this, this is enough to satisfy the compiler. Okay, because now we have update here. And again, if I go down here, let's go ahead down to Vulkan, we should find ourselves with the same error message here. Okay, so I would want to then be very consistent and also override this functionality here. So um, again, the, um, oh, and the error here again is since I don't have uppercase. Um, so again, that's why I really like uh, having this um, uh, override keyword here because it looks up to this hierarchy and says, hey, that function doesn't exist. And in this case, we didn't have update implemented. 
Okay, so let me go ahead and show all the code so you can see everything. Now, another strength of using interfaces in programming, especially if you know you're going to be driving a lot of base classes like OpenGL, Vulkan, DirectX, maybe some in the future, is it also avoids uh, problems happening if you have separate teams working on this code base. So for instance, let's say we have the OpenGL team gets really excited and they're just working on this class and they implement a new function here. And it's called um, draw optimized, you know, just some other interesting thing that they wanted to implement here. Okay, so they go ahead and have this function here. Um, now, if I go ahead and uh, compile this, and again, let me make sure I get it up and running. Again, no problems at this point here because I have my uh, Vulkan code here. But, you know, maybe the Vulkan team sort of gets word of this and they say, okay, yeah, we understand that there's some sort of draw optimize function, but they say draw optimize and they name it VK or something like this. Okay, and then I'm going to come down in my uh, renderer here and do the uh, draw optimized uh, function here instead. And let's do VK, and I'll highlight out this draw, and I'll compile it. And, well, immediately we can see that we're getting some error here. And it's also kind of showing or trying to simulate uh, what I'm doing in this example where different teams, which might not be communicating or looking at each other's code, are getting the same idea, but they're sort of differentiating these functions. And maybe these things take different parameters um, or are named slightly differently. So you have to go back to your interface here and have a common function here that is purely virtual and make sure that that is the one that is being implemented and overrided. Okay, so I'll go back in my code here. Um, actually, let me just run this again so you can see the error messages. Again, you'll see that they have this here and the candidate that was found is draw optimize. Um, that should actually be implemented and so on and so on. <clears throat> okay, so we can go ahead and quickly fix that here by getting rid of uh, this here and then making sure that we call the right function. Okay, and again, it's not strictly necessary that we have override here, but I'm gonna put it every single time just for a good code style uh, and in my OpenGL class as well. And we can see that this works nicely. All right, and then again, I can go ahead and change my mind later, use OpenGL or you know whatever later in the program, recompile, rerun, and the right tool is being used. So writing interfaces can be good for code and for sort of structuring things and making sure that derived classes have the consistent sort of API or use for anything that is that type. And in this lesson, I used an example of an I renderer, which is a common example where you might have this sort of interface. It also can future proof your code and make things a little bit more consistent in your code base when used appropriately and these coding conventions are enforced. So next time that you hear about abstract classes or this idea of an interface in C++, no, they don't natively exist in C++, but I've shown you how you can go ahead and create a sort of abstract class in your C++ code here. So if you found this lesson useful or have questions, make sure to engage by liking or subscribing. And we'll see you in the next one as we continue this series talking about C++ classes and all sorts of fun things in the future. We'll see you next time, folks.